My name is Steve Arles and um, we are the owners and the skipper of Hellraiser 2 or Cairns Black Marlin Charters is a company name. We are in the Cairns Marlin Marina. Try to keep the boat in Cooktown, that's where I, that's my home and I live just out of Cooktown but that's where I fished all my life. We have like, this is where, just a bit further north than here, this is actually where the rainforest meets the reef and it goes out to the continental shelf. It's about 30 mile. It's the best big fishery in the world. Mm -hmm. Come here to breed, but I read an article maybe 12, 14 years ago, and out of 600 black marlin that were weighed globally that exceeded a thousand pound, 94 or 96% come from here. The phenomenon we're so lucky to be involved with. Well, we're fishing the continental shelf. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you go to the outside reef, it sort of tapers off down to maybe 60 meters and continues out. Then it's like a hundred meter drop off and then it just drops, drops way away. Some places at number 10, it's very close to the reef. Um, so that's probably the best fishery up there is number 10 at the minute. Some places you only have to go three or 400 meters out and you're in 500 meters of water. Mate, my office is awesome. <laughs> I get to meet, uh, I'm, you know, we've met some really nice people and I get to go fishing every day. That's my passion. We enjoy our light, light tackle, and if you fish light tackle on light gear, it's, it's good fun too, but it, there's nothing beats what we do, catching big fish. We were keen to, to go out wide, and, and you know, we, don't, we knew the water was good out there. We were keen to get out there, but we didn't have baits, so the first day we went bait fishing, and we wanted to get some Spanish mackerel. We did that, we got some bait, we got some scad, we got some um, rainbow runners, we got some scalies, you know, all the favourite food, and we got some small Spanish. I wouldn't that small, probably six kilos, weren't they? We put out and um, mm -hmm. so day, day two, we went out to Jenny Louise. Everything looked perfect, but yeah, it's just um, the water temperature seemed okay. But yeah, we didn't, we didn't even mark one. So that's just the way fishing is. I was talking to the rest of the crew and they said, yeah, no, the rest of the fleet said, oh no, there's a couple little mile around. So we put some um, lures out and saw some bait and bang, there he was, he was on. <laughs> Very lucky. You guys were keen to spear a trout and do some snorkeling. Yeah, so I tried to find a, a good area for, for that, and I think you were pretty happy with one of those dives, weren't you? Mm -hmm. Filled in the day, we were casting a few poppers for GTs, and also we, we, we tried a bit of uh, bottom fishing and just filled your day and made it as pleasurable as we could. My wife there, yeah, she's the master of food on the boat. I've had people come back, not for the fishing, just for her food. <laughs> Uh, Mazza, Mazza is a, he's, he's, a, he's a tireless worker. He just doesn't stop. Yeah, he won't put a bait out. It's not perfect. And no, we've got a good crew. Good, good thing happening on the boat at the minute. So hopefully we can keep it that way for the future. We bought the boat, I think, in 2010, and um, it was a bit run down. It's a bit untidy, and um, that's how we could afford the boat. And um, ever since then, every year we've just been upgrading, upgrading, upgrading and um, fixing things. Last year we've done the major, we did the engine room and the transmissions and finally everything. And the heart of the boat's perfect and now we're just sort of concentrating on the cosmetic stuff. And it's a 43 O'Brien, very popular for up here. For the size of the boat, they do an amazing job. And this boat's, it's, it's fully set up for just for game fishing, so uh, it's awesome. So the most important things we have to do up here is like we need refrigeration, water, and fuel. So I hold 2,100 litres of fuel. Uh, we hold 1,000 litres of water. Like we've, we've since put a water maker on. And we have a huge freezer capacity as well as refrigeration. So we, we, we do nine, we could probably do 10 days at sea. And we're looking for, we're looking for fuel by then. We, uh, we, we chose to repower the engine room with Cumminses. We had Cummins in there, so we stuck with Cummins. Cummins have been a great engine for us. And we've put uh, the QSC 500s in there with quick shift transmissions behind it. We put three station quick shift, three station control units. So I've got control on the bridge. I've got two stations in the tower. So I have a rear facing station, which is just awesome driving backwards on the fish when I'm in the tower. Well, we've uh, been using Simrad for a while and we've just upgraded to the Evo 3s. We've, um, we've put in a new transducer this year, um, a high wide, and we've also put in a side scan. So, yeah, Simrad's been awesome. We've been, it's been really good to use. The definition's been awesome and 
Yeah, we've marked a lot of fish and caught a lot of fish with, it, with the Simrad. And I think if you're gonna fish heavy tackle, one of the most important things, you've got to be able to catch bait, fresh bait every day. So I run my low in manual, and the reason I run my low in manual is to, to make sure my water clarity is, is perfect. The water sometimes can look fine, but underneath the water can be, uh, you see the speckles on your screen? You're better off moving on and find a cl finding cleaner water. For some reason, the big blacks seem to like the cleaner water. Yeah, so I've been using Navy Onyx charts, and they've been so incorrect with the, um, contour lines and and um, Dan plugged in the uh, latest sea chart and, and I'm, yeah I'm amazed it's it's very close to being accurate and finally someone's you can uh, the marine parks are colored in so you can see the green area you can see the pink zone you know like we, we, we cover a fair bit of country so you're carrying these charts digging them out and in the wind and a bit of moisture and next thing that charts had it and if you haven't got it and they mark the lines on avionics but it's just you don't know whether, you know it's something, but you don't know it's green or pink or yellow. But no, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed.